every oh, time. Yeah. It was fire. The original Power Rangers theme song, absolute fire. Hey guys, I'm Caleb Giddings. I'm Keith. And I'm Jack. And this, we're talking about Power Rangers. We are actually we are actually talking about a former, specific former Power Rangers. A specific former Power Ranger who played the Red Ranger. Um and I don't I, I, which, I, I don't look which it up. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, would you look up his name? Because I actually like, you know, when I'm gonna talk shit about somebody, I want them to know that I, you know, at least respected them enough to know what they're before it's the like shit that, talking. It's like banner. Mike or something. Right. Yes, before I say mean things on the internet. Sponsor okay, I do want to say he's not the original. No, I, I don't think he is. No, no, no I would the, never. The, no, he was original, on like Power Ranger Ninja the Squad or something. Red guy, like it, dead or in prison or yeah, he, he did crime. One of them did crime. All right, well, let's not say who did crime because I don't want to get called out for like. I will look up who this guy no, no, was. The, the the original Red, I like. There was there was something with him because like they they got uh, they got some of the originals in the latest movie. Uh, hang on. I think it was my really should have Trainer. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, we definitely should have done this. Michael Trainer. Here we go. Uh, trivia. No, contribute to this page. I don't know. <laughs> it's not Colt. We're we're talking about the wrong guy here. We're talking about the wrong guy. Hang we on. We gotta restart this thing. Oh my <laughs> god. This. Hang on. All right. I'm gonna. This went sideways. There's gonna be some <laughs> editing in this episode. Redo. It's gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be fine. Uh, wait. Oh, you know what? I'll just call out his TikTok handle. Here we go. TikTok on the clock. Sorry. Um, inbox. Fuck off. No, no, it, it happened in both our heads. You just said it out loud. It it did at that. All right. Green is it. he's not Colt. Colt's another guy. I'm very Oh. At this point, there have been okay, so many. Okay, his name is Michael. Is his name is Michael Trainor. I just said that. That was Colt on Three Ninjas. No, it's not Colt. He's Rocky. Whatever. I think okay. hey, Colt. Uh, we're really gonna have to start this over because we've like called out some people. My oh, the Trainor, Power Rangers. Hang on, hang on. Uh, that does not look like this guy. Okay. Big Bang Mike TikTok. Big Bang Mike TikTok. Which, by the way, is actually a pretty good TikTok handle. Yeah, 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 no, no. Solid. Wait, is his name Mike Olasky? Yeah, it is. Mike Olasky. Here we go. Mike Olasky the second. Yep, this is the guy. He was in Three Ninjas High Noon at Mega Mountain, which I didn't know that that's like the what? fourth Three Ninjas movie. Hold on a I second. He was Mega in the Mountain. last one? Yeah. He was a recast. Of... Oh! 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 All right. I'm leaving this whole disaster in this oh episode. My God. <laughs> this whole <laughs> disaster okay. of us trying to figure out which one of these fucking Power Rangers I was talking shit to. So, Here's the backstory. He is not even an original Power Ranger, and he is also a Three Ninjas recast. Yeah, he's not even an original. Which is way more film than I've been in. So, So, anyway, (laughs) uh, he is also, I will say this, he's an accomplished mixed martial artist. He's had, you know, actual professional fights. So, and and done well. I did, knowing we were going to talk about this, I looked those up. He's good. Guy can fight. And we are not talking shit about him as like a mixed martial artist or anything like that. He would beat me up in a fight, no questions asked. However, let's get down to business to explain what's going on. So he posted a video on his TikTok uh, talking about how gun people, us, should uh, should like learn how to, you know, fight with your hands or like fight with knives and swords or shoot a bow and arrow and all of this other stuff. Because at some point you're going to run out of ammo in the apocalypse, right? That was the key is in the apocalypse because ammo is oh, going to get in more the apocalypse. expensive. Very, yeah. very likely to happen. Yeah, because ammo will get super more expensive and, you know, harder to find and all of that. And I posted a very calm reply just pointing out the scale of how much ammo there is. So for you guys that don't know uh, how much ammo we have just in the United States, in 2021, the consumer 
market, just the consumer market, the United States consumer market purchased 8 billion with a B rounds of ammunition. And that's a super inflated price. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. and Crazy that's price. just and this is what I talked about in the TikTok is that's just the US consumer market. That doesn't count law enforcement, military contracts, ammo made overseas that doesn't make it to this market. Like there's a whole other there's multiple we, other continents we are still to buy dipping ammo. into if you my friend, if you've still ever dipping seen into surplus from the 70s, 80s and 90s. One right. of the one of the retail places I I follow just got in a bunch of pallets and they're like, yeah, several million more. If you've ever seen War Dogs, there's a scene where there are like a bunch of cargo containers just full of seven six two by thirty nine, and it's a hundred million rounds of it, more or less. That is so common in the grand scheme of the world's supply of ammunition. It's not even worth talking about. There are warehouses full of ammo in Eastern Europe that people have forgotten exist that occasionally get rediscovered by like people who are like, oh, look at this old rotted out warehouse. I wonder what's in here. Crack, open the door. AK-47s and ammo. Also, dear Jesus, I see what you've done for other people. <laughs> <laughs> and they're, they're in sealed packaging. These aren't like cardboard. They're in sealed tins. I've cracked open and smelled so much 1970s East German air where I'm just like, oh, communism. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, it's get it off so me. Much the, of one, it. the one and good thing from even, the commies. Oh. <laughs> me and Keith were part of a purchase where we were delivered two barrels, 55-gallon drums of ammunition. And we had to crack those things open. They were hermetically sealed to survive all environments. Mm -hmm. If you're murder fantasy is the apocalypse and it requires that guns don't work you are looking for a thing called magic yeah because otherwise your great grandchildren will not hear the last shots fired in anger no, no, no. there's so much so much and, that, and that's just from production that's done right now that's yeah. if all ammunition production ceases which it won't and, and 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 here's the thing, these bullets work uh, like the shell casings. I you guys know this, but some weirdo may not. They, those can be reloaded for the most part. Mm -hmm. If you don't think there won't be a post-apocalyptic group of people who just go out to the battlefield and just pick them up, if you've ever been to a range on an off hour, you will know that there are people who come to these things just to collect the shell casings. So that's the, right now. Yeah, that's while today. While the coffee when, is pouring, boys. The the idea that there is some sort of apocalyptic scenario where the ammo just runs out. you're going to you're going to have water world and you're going to be out of gas before you run out of ammo. You'll be out of gas way before we run out of bullets. We'll be shooting each other on horseback uh before I mean it's just it, and it's, we'll it's be one shooting of those, each other on horseback with all current production cars like rusted out, hulked oh, out, yeah. just like gone. Just shooting each other, just doing wasteful mag dumps into trash with M16s because we found a warehouse full of five five six. Yeah, and do you know mm -hmm. how much how how many rounds the average carbine is good for? With no other parts, the low end is twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. Yeah, it's so many. Uh, These are. These are very durable goods, ladies and gentlemen. Very durable. And, and we're talking like, look, yeah, we all mag dump stuff into trash and done like, oh, I'm just going to do like an eight mag drill here just to see what happens. We've all done that. That is not combat. No. Combat so, is like way different. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about Mike uh, Olasky, the second, by the way, I found his IMDb. He's he's the second person with that name. Um, we talked a little bit about, you know, the idea that you were going to run out of ammo is nuts. If anything, ammo becomes a commodity and you like trade a brick of 22 LR for like six chickens and, and a butchered deer or something like that. Because so, so we go back to economy lit less than 200 years ago. Yeah, that, exactly. That was common economy less than 200 years ago. We are and not we had ammo centuries. back then from ammunition being valid currency like i wonder actually how long a like what, like i've got bricks of 22 lr that are in that plastic casing with the seal on the end that should last forever it's fantastic so 
to move off of how long ammo is going to last because it's going to last forever. And again, one year of production, 8 billion rounds just in the United States consumer market. All right. That is a bullet for every human being on the planet. One year of production just for the U.S. consumer market. Think that. Uh, and there, I know we are the biggest consumer market for guns, but we, but there's military, there's, there is a consumer market in Europe and Australia and even parts of Asia. Yeah, we're, you know, we're, we're a, a we may be the largest consumer market. We are, we are not unique as a producer. Yeah. Like Euro, European European producers, Asian producers are massive. That's why we import it. How many rounds is P, like PMC alone in South Korea? Uh -huh. billions billions of rounds a year oh like and we're talking like chinese produced ammo which is found all over the globe's conflict zones uh <laughs> we don't import nope we don't hey, we hey don't guys how this crate of ak's and market. chinese 762 end up in africa it's the damnedest thing <laughs> anyway but, so that, that that's just just on the supply side alone it's a ridiculous assertion on the second ridiculous assertion is that gun owners aren't learning hand-to-hand -hand combat or learning how to use knives or shoot bows and arrows Every, basic, and now i will say i have it we have probably a tightly tighter selected friend group on this show than other people but basically all of our friends have been to an ecqc all of our friends have some sort of unarmed skills. Many of our friends bow hunt. I know Jack bow hunts. Yeah, let me um, just, let me just, I am not a, a, an actively cool dude. I am, I am, I'm old now at 37, but I have 10 years of bouncing in biker bars, five years of jujitsu, bow hunting. For 13 years, I trained to fight sword and shield. Let's talk about the sword thing for a second. Yeah, like, let's just go ahead. That was a hobby. Like, yeah. at no point did I ever, like, I did hear a lot of people do this. Now, don't I came from that community. That community says this dumb stuff about ammunition running out all the time. But we we learned a lot fighting with sword and shield, where we're just like, we're doing it for points, and it's fun. Um. Swords are really cool when you're wearing armor and the other guy is a peasant. But if you don't have a full suit, and I mean ankles to top of head chainmail, you're gonna die. And, and I don't mean just in like that, that's a in really that first big fight. knife that lets the blood right. out. Right, like, I don't even mean in that first fight. Like, you could just be the best swordsman in the world and just, like, wop, bop, 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 take out three dudes, and just one of those dudes, like, nicked your arm really good. You're like, oh, blood running down it. I'm cool. Oh, crap, sepsis, dead. Like, or, holy crap, that was an artery. Ah, damn it. Oh, or, no, nick the artery. I'll see you guys back. in three minutes. Thanks for letting me win. in the back by a guy with a pike. Because... Right. That's the other thing that like all okay we're gonna uh, we're gonna side sidebar into sword boys here for a minute because <laughs> because sword guys are without a doubt the weirdest and the worst and they're the ultimate expression so there is a uh a, there, there's a certain mindset among some members of the martial arts community whether it's traditional martial arts or modern mixed martial arts where oh you should you don't need a gun to defend yourself just learn jujitsu or muay thai or whatever and that we could do a whole episode on how dumb those guys are uh um, every gracie i know shoots yeah, yeah. Almost and they everybody, love it almost everybody yep. i know that's into mixed martial arts or punching people or choking people in their pajamas also shoots so uh but sword boys the worst expression of those people because they're like this sword is good for personal defense and i'm like against what an unarmed peasant yeah that's it swords are really cool if the other guy isn't wearing armor if that guy is wearing armor you are in for a bad day because all it feels like is just getting chopped into without without the cut now you can watch people fight in full armor and this is this is like full harness plate armor uh, plate is not typically what you think of it as. Most of what people think of plate armor is jousting armor. 
Uh, when I talk about a fighting harness, that's a different kind of thing. There's a little bit more mobility. But we have active people fighting in full armored combat right now. There's a video of a guy Spartan kicking a dude. There, in that there's I'm going to, the I, most amazing yeah, thing. There, there's, a, there's a whole competitive division that brought armor back to fight in this stuff. One of the coolest people I know that fights in this. This is no kidding. I found... I. I'm in the sword world, so I'm watching this stuff. I come across this girl who's fighting, and she's just tearing it up, having a great time, really high energy, great participation. She's talking about You can tell she's just really passionate. And then, like, I'm watching her for, like, eight months. I'm like, oh, this chick's awesome. She's doing, like, really great stuff. I love watching her fights. Then she showed who her parents were. Her dad is Mac. The Delta dude. Like Pat Mac? Pat, Pat Mac. Magdemera. I forgot the Pat for some reason. I was like, Pat Mac was her dad. And I'm like, is your father Pat Mac? And she's like, oh, some guys do know who my dad is. And I'm like, <laughs> like some guys. <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, so the whole thing with this sword idea, right? It's the the sword idea is this and the knife idea, quite frankly, of like using swords and knives and bladed things and as bows your, and, and bows. Like, bows we can bows is a completely separate conversation that we can get to in a minute um which also is part of my how to spot a prohibited person game uh, um <laughs> but the uh the whole idea of like swords and knives as your primary defensive instrument is almost universally propagated by people who have never been in an actual sword or knife fight and i mean a real one they've never been stabbed they've never had somebody cut them in a way where there was intent like i I carry a knife for a very, very specific use case, and it's not because I want to fight somebody else who has a knife. Like, nope. that is not, that's not why I have that on me at all. Uh, and it is not a primary. It's like, uh, it, it's really... It, my, it's, the, it's the world has gone so bad, but this is my one point of leverage I have left over this situation. That's it. But, and I mean, to people who are listening, it, you know what a clinch pick is. You know why you carry a clinch pick and you understand the use case for it. You know, um, Michael Lasky II, because he got upset when I referred to him as a former Power Ranger. So I'm only referring to him by his full hey, name. It may be a thing like name. being in the Marines where once you're a Power Ranger, you're always a Power Ranger. <laughs> and, and well, that's the thing. Been... I'm not here to look. That's a very elite group. Very few people that in the world have ever been Power Rangers. There yeah, are far also, more Marines, to be honest. More people than I thought have been three ninjas because apparently. <laughs> <they're> <laughs> We can't. You're not even the original three ninja. Stop it. <laughs> That's not cool, man. Uh, so anyway, but the idea that like one, the idea that gun people aren't training to do this stuff is ludicrous. Are there some gun people who aren't? Yeah, sure. Are there lots of gun people who are? Oh yeah, yeah. There's a whole whole mess of us. Now, now let's talk about bows. All right. So bows and arrows. Bows and arrows are cool. Uh, I there are a lot bows of and arrows. I, I enjoy shooting bows and arrows. I would not want to take a bow and I like. I would not want to take a bow and arrow to a fight for any number of reasons. Not the least of which being bows and arrows that are good for fighting, like your Mongolian short recurve bows and stuff like that, are designed for a specific type of fighting. English longbows are designed for a specific type of fighting modern compound bows aren't designed for fighting at all they're designed for hunting uh they're the the, the universe i, I, I noticed something about accurate uh archery combat too uh the the part where there are a lot of archers like a lot a lot <laughs> a lot of them like a lot of them you and, put and them in a big group and tools? you make them shoot at another big group are physically elite to use the English longbow bow in combat changed your body. I could not draw a historically accurate English longbow. Uh, I'm not a weak you're not, person. You're not tall enough. You will, yeah, there's that too. It's actually taller than I am. It's six feet tall, isn't it? Uh, you can get it done at like 5'10", five, 5'11", five, but six feet really is the ideal height to work an English longbow. There's a very like complicated draw method because it actually comes from your hips shoulders and mm -hmm. arms in a very precise like what mm -hmm. we're doing i'm gonna nerd out here for a minute what we're doing is we're rolling the body and pushing and stretching at the same time almost like push pull technique with a shotgun 
Oh, weird. Ooh. I could shoot a Mongolian short bow, though. I've done that. Uh, uh the, yeah, nice. with the height thing there, that's a that's a recurve compared to the long bow, yeah. which is a lot harder to make. Yes. Um, incredibly difficult to make. But actually. we're looking for something between. Some people will say thirty pounds of dude. I've actually been shot by a padded arrow with a thirty pound bow, and I felt it, but I don't think it would kill me. I like it would it would have to like really get in there. But so, somewhere in the forty to one hundred and twenty pound range, uh, we'll do it. The great thing about modern compound bows, those are the bows, the pulleys and levers and everything. The reason why most people use those for hunting is the hold. Mm-hmm. You you use all that strength to get to the hold, and then the cams lock, and I'm only holding a very small amount of that weight. Yeah, and I'm probably not even holding it with my fingers. I'm probably holding it with a release mechanism. And now I'm able to carefully aim. I've got sights on that. And I can ethically take the shot when it is correct. So the whole idea of fighting with a bow stems from the Hollywood trope of the way archer is portrayed in movies, which is archer equals sniper. Like that's your one-to-one portrayal of archery in movies. And I'm fine with that if we're in like a Lord of the Rings setting or a marvel universe setting because we have very clearly dis at this point discarded you know reality right there's dragons and you know yeah, iron we're, man and we're having but... fun right now so we yeah. can have fun by saying this person is so good at this skill that it defies the normal rules but if you're talking about the actual practical application of archery throughout history you the way it was used by the mongols was different than the way it was used in the west in the west it was artillery it was it filled a very similar role to the way that we utilize artillery minus the beyond visual range capa- uh, capabilities obviously but read up on agincourt and you'll you'll kind of get the feeling of how the west understood archery the other thing about archery in the west is it was the beginning of the return to democracy Mm -hmm. um an archer anybody with a longbow could kill a man on horseback if he wasn't wearing full plate and once the crossbow became available even in full plate he could be killed this is why we start seeing armor go away um and guns kind of finalized this you would still see guys wearing breastplate and other stuff because they were expected to close and fight with swords and knives and axes and hammers and pikes and other things all of which i want to return to the fact if you win you have to know about wound care yeah because dying some of that wound care is hold them down we got to chop the limb off Mm mm-hmm yeah, like, guys, we're talking about barbaric practices here. So whenever somebody says to me, I know how to use a sword, my thought is... Do you know how to use a tourniquet? Do, do, you, know how to, do you know how to clean a wound? Do you, need, do you know, how, like, what time to prioritize cleaning your wound versus, like, self-care versus buddy care? Like, what does the squad dynamic look like? <clears throat> Have you actually, like, done your triangle on the ground and known where your footwork was supposed to go if you ever fought with a friend because that really sucks when you and a friend are fighting with sword and shield or other such medieval weaponry and you don't know how to talk and work together it's a lot different than laying on the ground and shooting at a dude which is also really complicated Mm -hmm. and the masters of that stuff are the guys who will master sword work Mm -hmm. like if you think that your great equalizer will be like Bro, I got this sword. I promise you that if it happens and, like, the magic turns off the gunpowder, which I'm going to plug a book here, uh, if that idea is cool to you, I get it. There's a book series called Dies the Fire by S.M. Sterling. It is phenomenal and really good. Highly recommend you read it. But I promise you, day two of Guns Not Working, Delta Force will be working on sword drills, and those dudes are coming for you, baby. Yeah. Like... (laughs) Yeah, it turns out that the elite killing machines are elite killing machines because of their personality and training, not because <laughs> not, not they because, have HKs. Ooh, we made this magic bang stick work. Yeah. 
Delta Force is still going to be incredibly dangerous. All of the people that are currently incredibly dangerous will still be incredibly dangerous. They'll still, in they'll fact, be incredibly out. dangerous. So in short, guys, uh, we'll wrap this episode up by saying, first off, thanks to everyone for watching, listening, liking, sharing, subscribing. Uh, secondly, don't get your self-defense and apocalypse advice from the replacement for one of the three ninjas and a uh, not even OG Power Ranger. For the record... If, if, if you, By the way, sir... Miss Mike, whatever your yeah. name is, however you want to be addressed, His full I want to say name. that we are coming to you from a place of this is moderately humorous. Yeah, we are being serious. You We're don't not like, know what you're talking about with ammo production. There, there's there's some you have a weird people, point. There's a serious aspect. Yeah, but we're not like actually like I'm not actually ripping this guy. I've enjoyed some of his other content on the internet. If this is one of those situations where. Uh, that I desperately try to avoid where someone, a content creator gets into a lane that's adjacent to their existing lane and shows their ass. And I they also, don't, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and, and they don't do it on purpose. They're usually not doing it. It's not it. done with malice. It's not done at look at me, how smart I am or anything yeah. like that. It's just one of those where he was like, this is the thing. And I'm like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And yeah, we're okay. also content creators. Yeah. We were just fuel for our fire, and we're yeah. fuel for your fire. It I happens. totally get it. By the way, congrats on being Tuscan Raider number seven, which is really what you should introduce yourself Yeah, as. lead with really? that, not Power Ranger. Come on, Tuscan Raider number seven. Tuscan uh, you were Raider. also a soldier in Sinners and Saint, which is a fantastic underground movie with one of my favorite guys, um, why I'm so bad with names. Uh, it's Johnny Strong. Oh my God! Yes, Sinners and Saint was a fantastic flick about like New Orleans cops and mercenaries fighting it out. I didn't know you were in this. Good for you on that. Um, also, uh, William Kaufman should do more movies. That man does some pretty good action. Oh, and he was um, in he was in an uncredited he had an uncredited appearance in Star Trek Enterprise. Anyways, uh, this is not a, this is not like an attack, you know. Please, you know, don't interpret it like that. We're really just trying to point out that like this is way more complicated than a lot of people put any thought into it. And uh, also, and you know, ammo ain't ammo ain't running out in a year. Oh my god, ammo, yeah. <laughs> hundreds of years come on all right guys that's it for this week thank you everyone for liking sharing subscribing listening uh i feel like we did an ask for user some things last week and i didn't get any of them but it's been it was two weeks ago that we filmed that episode and we're all pretty fucking busy so if we did we did if you have ideas for shit you want us to talk about on the show though definitely send us emails or comments or carrier pigeons even though birds aren't real birds are not real that's why the carrier pigeon works <laughs>